Aloha everyone, this is Laulani hey. and Talisa and we're live from UCLA and we have been walking around campus, we've been scoping it out. Yep, and we're just visiting the campus. Um, we went to the astronomy department. Yeah. We walked around, kind of scoped things out. Oh, I think we're supposed to turn over here. Oh. <laughs> we're, we're a little lost, but yeah. that's okay. <laughs> we'll find our way. Yeah. We're going to go to, um, we're, we're doing a presentation tonight. Yeah. At the um, Ackerman Student Union. At six o'clock. Yep. And um, meanwhile, we've been walking around, kind of scoping out this campus. There seems to be a lot of consciousness here. Yeah. Yeah. We ran into some Pacific Island students earlier who were educating the other students about Mauna Kea. Mm -hmm. That was pretty cool, that was, huh? That was really cool. Um, they were giving stuff out. Yeah, they, they offered if you sign the petition, they would give you a free donut, which is good. <laughs> yeah, donuts for Mona Kea! <laughs> Imperialism and colonialism, because it's still happening today, and the issues that happened in the past are still going on. Sign our petition. If you want to show so, if you want to show support for Native Hawaiians in Hawaii, sign our petition. Show them that building on Native Hawaiian land without Native Hawaiian permission shouldn't happen. So, brother, it's good to see you, man. It just it takes ten seconds of your time. It's quick and easy. Please and thank you. Thank you very much. So yeah, so we're we're walking over to the presentation right now. We we kind of walked around the astronomy department. We went and saw the TMT board members there um, up there. We saw well, we saw where their offices are. Um, it's a little late in the day, so the office was closed. But yeah. we kind of got some idea, huh? Yeah, just like where everything is, I guess, if that makes sense. Not everyone was there though. Okay, we're gonna have to watch our step because we we're walking down some big steps. But um, anyway, tune in later because we will be back. We will be broadcasting, if we can, from the student union building where we are giving a presentation with Uncle Liko and the students, the Pacific Island Students yeah. Association who are having a town hall and, um, and uh, what, what was it called, teach-in on Mauna Kea. Yep. And this is in preparation for the um, UC, the, the University of California Board of Regents meeting, which is going to be right here at UCLA on the, um, on, uh, the 13th of yeah. March. It's coming right up. So the students are really preparing for that and we're trying to help them out as much as we can. And mahalo to Talissa. She's our youth ambassador, you know, connecting the nations all over California. She comes from the... River tribe in Northern California. Um... Oh, I think we gotta go down um, that way. <laughs> I mean, this is a, it's a really beautiful campus. It's very, um, it's kind of... There's lots of stairs and lots of um, lots of beautiful, beautiful landscaping yeah. and um, architecture here. It's really nice. So, um, so anyway, look forward to what might be coming up. Um, yeah. Yeah. Definitely and excited. We're just sort of um, exercising and just walking around because we were in the car all day. <laughs> and it was it was a good day. And yeah. I'm excited for later. Yeah, and mahalo to Talissa. She's been she's she's been a complete trooper doing um doing all kinds of work all over the place and oh look look at these brothers. Wait, check this out. You guys gotta you guys gotta see these guys. They're awesome. Okay, wait, wait, wait now. Wait, wait. Okay. 
I also think UCLA, especially, it's like no one, everyone's like, part of the UCLA system. Is that okay? Do you care about I'm live, is that okay? And they feel that Native Hawaiians should be brought into the discussion. Yeah, my brother's out there at University of Oh, yeah. Okay. These brothers over here, they're talking to students at UCLA about Mauna Kea. How awesome is that? They're totally awesome. Can you tell me a little bit about the, um, the Pacific Island Students Association and what you're doing? So I'm I'm in actually the American Indian Student Association, uh -huh. and my friends here are a part of the, the student the Polynesian Student Work. So they would probably know a little bit better. That's so awesome that you're you guys are allying with with them on this. Yeah, because indigenous issues are cross cultural. Like because yeah. we're all dealing with legacies of colonialism, right, imperialism, you know, ongoing. Yeah. Thank you so much. Oh, that's so awesome! Mahalo, mahalo. <laughs> Hey, mahalo. Yeah. Is, is it okay? I'm live. Is oh, that, no, is that okay? Yeah, no, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Actually, I, I was wondering if you guys can kind of tell me what you're doing. I kind of have some of the Mauna Kea folks kind of oh, tuned in. This, this is the man to go to. Yeah. <laughs> this is who you want on camera. Yeah, no, no. He's the one he's been talking all day, but we're out here just trying to help the cause. Um, we're petitioning on behalf of y'all and on behalf of the Pacific Islander Student Association. Um, we have a petition here. We've gotten hundreds of signatures today, and we're just pretty much doing what Papa was doing back there, uh, trying to gain support, trying to inform people. We met a few people that, you know, didn't feel so comfortable with signing the petition, so we wanted to invite them to the town hall to get a more informed opinion on on the situation and hear from actual activists and Kanaka's from If you care about from indigenous from peoples, and indigenous and, lands, help show support for Native Hawaiians, Oh, thank you so much. You guys are awesome. Really appreciate it. So at 6 p.m., we're going to do our best to continue to um, to share from Ackerman Hall, yeah, right? Ackerman Viewpoint. Ac Ackerman Viewpoint Room. So at 6 p.m. At 6 p.m. Yep. And so that's that's where it will be. And um, please stay with us. Okay. Mahalo nui loa. Thank you so much thank for you. doing this.
stars, but what there is something wrong with is building a 18-story building, right? I, I don't know how many stories this building is, but if you can imagine, this is not even 18 stories, right? So imagine a couple of these guys sitting in, of this building sitting on top of each other. We kind of like get some idea of how large this thing we want to put on our most sacred mountain is. Not only does it go 18 stories high, it goes two stories deep into a very, very fragile ecosystem, you know, a very, this is, we're talking about a very high mountain with an ancient glacier on it. You know, I mean, where does that happen, right, in our Pacific Islands? But it does, on um, can, right, and um, so this has a very, very um, unique and fragile microflora um, population in that area that they have decided that they want to destroy in the name of science. Um, and it's, it, you know, it's, it's, it's just, it's pretty hard. It's, it, we're talking about four football fields, if you can imagine that, on top of, on top of a very high mountain peak, yeah? I mean, it's a place called the Northern Plateau, which is, it is a plateau, but there's a reason why that plateau is also very special. So anyway, we are resisting that destruction. Not resisting science, not resisting the progress of science. In fact, we are asking science, we're challenging science to do better. We are saying to science, we believe in you. We believe in you and we believe that you can do better. You know, we want, we speak not only for ourselves and our need to protect the land, but also for the scientists that we need to solve, the future scientists that we need to solve the problems that humanity is facing on this planet Earth right now. And in order for those great minds you know, okay, can I see how, are there science students here? Any science students? Yeah, for, for these great minds right here, right here, right? For these great minds to be able to actually do great work and solve problems and have the resources to do that, right? There has to be an understanding that that is what science is supposed to do is fix problems, not create them, not destroy the earth, but protect the earth, heal the earth, right? That's, that's the general idea. But unless we stand up and say that not only does our mountain get destroyed, but the future of these scientists is also pretty crappy because, you know, then it's like we're talking about the same old, same old,
sovereignty for um, for the restoration of a country. You know, it's a very, very important thing for so many things. And through that restoration, we're also talking about peace. Because by any occupation in one place that just so happens to be the most militarized piece of earth in the entire in that entire ocean, right? And it controls all of the other militarized zones in that entire region, in that entire Pacific region, which is a very big military area. Um, by restoring Pono, which means what's right, then we can actually restore peace to a big part of the earth. A really, really big part of the earth. You know, and we can help to for other nations to come up. You know, other indigenous nations, the other Pacific nations, you know, and also those nations who are trapped in their own colonization. You know, whose peoples are stuck in a situation where they don't have health care, they don't have basic things because, yeah, they might be the part of the colonizer nation, but they're they're suffering too. So uh, the idea of protecting Mama Kea is really a very large picture of freedom for everybody. You know, it's, I mean, it's not going to do it by itself, but it's a pretty big place to make a pretty big shift. And um, for those who don't know, the situation has been building up over years, right? This, um, we're talking about a decade of this 30 meter telescope being proposed, and they came up to the communities, and the community said, absolutely not. You know, no way you are going to build this, and if you try to build it, we're going to resist you. Okay? It said it in no uncertain terms. And that was written up, but they didn't listen. And so they tried to build it anyway. And they started doing things like giving money to this program over here and funding these guys over there, you know, and stuff to kind of make friends. And it was very hard, you know, that, that's, it's very hard when that happens on our communities. But it has, it, um, you know, still, we love each other and people more or less stuck together and, you know, we just kept telling them, no, 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 absolutely, ah, oh, eh, no, you know, and so what ended up happening was that um, they actually went to go do a groundbreaking ceremony and that And 
on the, the standing front, yes, people are certainly ready to stand. There is no doubt about it. And so is the state. And the state has really big guns prepared, like millions of dollars that they have requested specifically to brutalize, to brutally remove the indigenous people of the land they sit on. That's, the, that's their agenda, that's what they plan to do. And I mean, they'll say it's not going to be brutal, yeah, because they want to have so much force they can see it. That's, that's what they're talking about, right? So because of that, we are looking at a really difficult situation. Yeah? I mean, people are still ready to stop. There's no doubt about it. Okay? Nobody could let that telescope break ground on one if people can help it. And if it means doing it over their dead bodies, they would do it. I'm not kidding. You know? And um, at the same time, uh, there's a, there's a lot of pressure, so all of this is building up. And what's the solution? Well, guess who it is? Anybody want to guess? Well, I'm thinking it's you guys. I'm serious. UCLA, the University of California, and all of the schools that are part of the um, part of those TMT partners, because you have professors here on campus that are board members for the 30 meter telescope, yeah? The University of California is a very, very major partner in the 30 meter telescope, right? And I'm not condemning them. They're, you know, we know a lot of the scientists involved and, you know, we love them. Well, there's no, there's no lack of a law, but, Again, we are asking science to do better. Do better. You're not doing well here. Do better. Yeah? So that's that's the message that we have. And um, you know, and we're really seriously talking about putting some major pressure on that a lot of these things we were just at Caltech yesterday and
happen to be in this because there's a lot of work that is needed on Oahu to fight this battle. And um, that and now that is expanding here, letting you folks know as a heads up. So um, I'm sure that um, more can be shared. You know, Mahalo to Carla who told me about the University of California Board of Regents meeting on the 13th. That is going to be crucial, folks, because we're talking about the actual people who are actually investing in this destruction. You know, without their money, it can't happen. If they, if you say no to them, they can say no. And if they can say no, it, the whole deal can be off. So, um, mahalo so much for being here. We really, really, really appreciate you folks for, um, for being with us. And, you know, we, I can tell you right now that people in Hawaii who've been fighting this for a really long time, you know, I posted some pictures from over here, and Auntie Pua Case said that, you know, she's just been, she's just been in the trenches, you know, doing bureaucratic stuff, trying to, you know, try to fight this, these things, and, you know, it gets you down, and then she saw you folks, she saw the pictures of you folks being here and standing with us, and it just gave her so much inspiration, and that's really, really a big part of what you're doing here right now, so really, really mahalo, mahalo. I just want to acknowledge Talissa, who's been traveling with us. You know, she's a student from the Pitt River Nation in Northern California, um, and their people take care of Mount Shasta. And you know, these these great mountains—they're all embattled, and they all—they're um, all awesome, and they're all so important for all of us. So, mahalo to Talissa too. Why? You know, the thing coming coming to today, ask myself, well, okay, what's missing? What what question are we not asking? Or what do I need to fill in here? And one thing I'd like to fill in is I mentioned earlier that good news travels slow. And I have a copy of a letter here that I would like to leave with this with the group here. And it is a letter from the legal expert, uh, Dr. Desaias, Alfred Desaias, who at one time actually left his position last year as the uh, um, holding one of the human rights mandate in Geneva to become involved and to start to address the situation in the Hawaiian Islands. Now this letter that I, I really appreciated that you all be, um, that this information can, it can be disseminated. It's a letter to Antonio Guterres, the Secretary General of the United Nations. And he is identifying to the United Nations and all of the member states that Hawaii is under a prolonged military occupation and that there are serious human rights abuses that are occurring there. For 126 years, starting from the time of Queen Lilu Okalani, who filed protests in 1897, who tried to um, get uh, President Cleveland at that time to return the Hawaiian Islands, at that time was a neutral power. Finally, we have a letter 126 years later. And this, at this moment, uh, resolutions will be drafted to go into the United Nations to bring Hawaii and the territories of Alaska into the view that they don't belong to the United States Corporation. I'm sorry, okay. And one of the things that, that's pointed out in this letter, I guess, I ask me is why? What, what broke down, what didn't work? in Hawaii that has brought this situation, which is really great. We have to learn where not to go. Sometimes we forget, and the only way we're gonna be reminded is when somebody starts to walk down that trail. 
Okay. And in this letter, Dr. Desire says that the judicial systems of the United States and the state of Hawaii are not following the laws of occupation, where you must administer Hawaiian king. If it's in the Hawaiian Islands, it's Hawaiian kingdom law. We want to be really clear that we're not, you know, this is not a NIMBY thing for us. We're not saying, oh, you know, don't build it on our sacred mountain, but go to somebody else's land and build it. You know, we're definitely not saying that, in fact, what we are saying, because, because the situation in La Palma is, um, it's very different from what we have, but it's something that we're familiar with. You know, it's, it's one in which um, it appears that most of the people there really do support the TMT coming, um, but it has also, been through so much genocide and so much economic struggle that, you know, when you ask what people really want, sometimes you have to balance it with what they would want if they weren't in the really messed up situation that they're in, you know? And while it's impossible to totally do that, for anyone else but yourself, at the same time, it's also not okay to assume that that doesn't exist. You know? So, so yeah, the answer to that is, yes, they are discussing another um, site. And, um, you know, certainly the people there appear to be more welcoming than in Hawaii. Um, whether it's right for them to go there or not, I really can't say. I thought, you know, I'm, I'm not from that place, so I wouldn't be able to say, but I would say that sometimes the indigenous voices, especially after there's been genocide, and especially after there's been history of repression, those indigenous voices can be very soft, and you can't assume that they're not there just because you can't hear them, you know? So, so I guess that's the answer to that. Maybe. When I was eight, I was taken up to the mountain. I always used to go up to Mount Kale and I would travel and come here because I, when I used to go to uh, into Dene country in Arizona in Fort Collins to visit my friends in the medicine circle, I used to go there to gather sand for the sand paintings. But right now, that sand is completely contaminated with depleted uranium from the huge, the biggest military, the biggest telescope, the biggest of what is happening there. On the plains below the mountain, the depleted uranium is everywhere. Already the aquifers, uh, that's the aquifer of water, okay? Uh, Mauna Kea needs to be cleaned up the mercury seals that have occurred. This is what science, if, if Caltech and the people want to do something, take care of the mountain. And, and you know, I was watching a, a, a TV show yesterday about uh, this uh, Coca-Cola road where they keep all the ice off. And we got to have a big rig to take the trucks out. Sometimes the guys just say, just fix the old big rig, man, it's good enough. So that, you know, can give you some ideas. But the place where it was going to be built, I was taken up there and I sat down and I noticed that the stones were set. This was not just, they were arranged, they were set there. Later on, I was informed by Keloha that I had actually was sitting in what they call the Rim Shrines. In this particular place, exactly where that telescope would go, you can see the entire archipelago. The entire archipelago. Okay. Now that is a view plane, not only down below, but up above. One thing, um, you know, this is kind of an out of the box thought, but um, you know, in terms of an alternate site, one consideration is that there are like a lot of um, telescopes or science proposed telescopes that have said at different times, hey, 
TMT, if you guys don't build your telescopes because we know you've made those mirrors already, we'll take a mirror, you know, and can you imagine this 32 segments to make a 30 meter lens, right? One thirty second of those, 32 of those, that's a lot of potential viewing power could be spread over the earth to people who really could use that for great things. So anyway, that's just another thought. Uh, I'm a Mali Tulono, and um, I'm very interested in outer space where people used it as their map to get to our homeland. And I thought that these telescopes, in a way, do connect <laughs> to our ancestors in that we are studying our maps. But I do agree with you in that they have to do it in a way that's okay with the land. Mm -hmm. And um, I just, I want to know if, if there's any way we can work with the scientific community and make sure they understand that they need to be okay with making the land vulnerable and the good and uh, not desecrating sacred sites. Is there any work being done to work with them? <coughs> Indigenous sites rights and titles. Science, rights, and titles. My friend from Alaska the other morning, he's a really smart guy, hide a total fighter, you know, go to Washington, D.C., get right in their face, he said, the other morning, he said, well, brother, the bottom line is, they got no title to the land in Hawaii. And we are in Hawaii, even those who would be coming in to do the hit, to arrest and, and maim and abuse, physically remove the police officers. Okay, we can't, we're, we're so close to, to civil, uh, civil conflict in Hawaii, it's, uh, it's hard to believe, but it is true. Okay, so the. Um, so much redundant. Is it okay if I'm telling you? It just doesn't need to go there. I'm talking about it more like. Working with the science community to understand the bigger issues that they need to address before it. To answer your question, a lot has actually been done on, you know, in that um, in that capacity. Unfortunately, it's been very difficult in Hawaii, you know, and the, specifically, you know, because the university is so embattled, you know, and the and the Kanaka protector, land protectors are so embattled. It has been difficult, but there definitely have been bridges made for that exact thing. I mean, definitely Kiyoko <coughs> showed up because she came from a physics background. She came, you know, as she was a telescope operator, right? At the same time as a, being a cultural practitioner. And then eventually it, you know, could not do both of those and ended up being the, the leader of, of um, a lot of, you know, she ended up being the spokesperson for Mauna Kea, for the protection of Mauna Kea. And in doing that, because she had all those connections to the scientists, um, there's been a lot of dialogue. And, you know, honestly, we keep hearing from the scientists that they would love to have the freedom to explore ways to see the same stuff without this kind of destruction. They would love to have that. It's just that, when they say that they have to do things this way, what they really mean is that they are limited by the funding that they're able to receive to, to do it this way. They have to, this is the most they can achieve within the funding that they can have, that they have, right? So in order to see what a 30 meter mirror would be able to view, Right? To be able to see that much, and, and you're right, it's absolutely um, you know, a, a, an amazing connection in a lot of ways, albeit a very destructive one in practicality. Right? And so, um, but it's destructive because there's an assumption that you can destroy, that it's okay to destroy that you have to destroy. Because once it's okay to destroy, then it becomes a must. Because that's where the funding is gonna go, because 
quite honestly, the funding doesn't care about whether a sacred mountain is destroyed or not. The scientists may, but they, they're not the ones who control that, right? And that's why we're here at the University of California, Los Angeles, is because you know this school, this institution, is one of the funders, not so much the science side. While it is a science, it you know it's it definitely does represent the science side, but more so, it represents the money that is going into those bulldozers. You know, in the name of science. So anyway, just to just to um, to to look at that. But one thing that I would say is that through this very tense situation, amazing bridges have also been built, you know? Just in the last week, I've met more astronomers than I've met in a whole lot of my lifetime, you know? Because they've been coming out and asking questions. You know, some aren't ready to support us necessarily, but, they, but they're asking questions and that's really, really important. That's where it starts. And some of them are, in fact, standing with us, you know, which is an amazing thing. And we're getting more support from inside of the astronomy community where astronomers, you know, a lot of times it's um, people who are astronomers and they're also activists in, another, in other realms. And they're kind of like, hey, wait a minute, what, what? You're going to arrest and brutalize a huge part of the indigenous people so that you can look at the stars? You know, it's, you know, even though there are people who professionally look at stars, right, and know how important that is, but they also know that there's something wrong if you're talking about, you know, if you're talking about forcibly removing a people from their land, from their most sacred land, where their most sacred prayers are, so that you can build something to have a better view of the stars. Um, like, so you see a native like pictures of the Native American people, and like two specific scientists. Um, I'm wondering if like, they were responsive to like your efforts, um, specifically like James Larkin, like Ian Queen, because they're the ones who are going to help in develop this project. Um, and because of some invasive, I don't know if you've like, have you had access to them? Have you been denied access? Um, you know, to be really honest, I um, we just we, we, we dropped by their office all of a sudden. I went by their office earlier today. All of their um, the three who are involved here, as far as I know. And so um, we did drop by their office earlier today. We didn't, um, we, we just got here to use, we haven't been in this area before. So this is kind of our first time. Um, so yeah, that, that, that is, it is very important though, because a couple of days before that, we spoke with Dr. Ed Stone, who is the, um, you know, he's, he's the director of TMT at Caltech, because we were over there at Pasadena, and, um, and we went and talked to him, and it was a really good talk. You know, not that he's gonna stop doing this project, but it was a really good talk, and we did the same thing at UC Santa Cruz with Dr. Michael Bolte, you know, and we did the same thing at the Gordon Moore Foundation, you know, with the, um, with the, the, the director of the Gordon Moore Foundation and the communications officer. And, you know, it, it is, you're absolutely right. That's very, very important is to have those conversations. However, for us, because, you know, I mean, we can, we can write people from a distance and that's one thing, right? But to be able to actually speak to them, um, means that we have to have some kind of what we call poleana, you know, which means that we have a position of a relationship with them already on which to speak.
speak, right? So, um, you know, we were able to speak with Dr. Stone because we were there, you know, we were having this, this event um, at his institution. So we went out of courtesy and, and, and talked to him, and, you know, in, in a good way. Um, and yeah, we did go knock on some doors today. We didn't have success. We would say that the students here at this university do have that kuleana, you know, in terms of in terms of kuleana, in terms of that um, position to be able to speak to somebody. Yeah, it's a, it's a I guess it's a, it, it's an indigenous thing, you know, that, that you, you in order to like reach out and talk to people, you can, you can, you can campaign and petition to anybody, but to build a real human relationship, you have to have some place to build it upon, you know, some, something that connects you already. And so um, that's, that's basically what we've been doing, and we've been getting a good reception, but yeah, we haven't been able to actually talk to anybody at this university yet, but we do, hope that that happens in the future and you know both with us and with any of you you know these are the, they're really scientists even the ones who are actively involved in fighting us and i i, I will not get around with you it's been a really really hard fight but those scientists they're they're humans too you know, they're people, and Mauna Kea is about peace. It's not about war and hate. It's really, uh, from ancient, ancient times, it's been a place of peace and the sanctity of, you know, of, of, of that which is right. That's, that's what it has always represented, and that's what it represents now, and to protect that is to protect that, that peace and that aloha. And so, you know, we, we do ask that people reach out, not, you know, not in an angry or a mean way, but really to call people's better self out, you know, to say, hey, as a scientist, we respect you and we believe you can do better. You know, we ask you to do better. Please. I see the potential of money for getting back to Kealoha, you know, whoa. and have them come up here, to come here and actually be more engaged. You know, because they weren't quite sure, and, and even Kealoha, when she was speaking with us after she came up, she said she was surprised. She didn't think that it would, it would mean that much that, to her, personally, but when, after she sat there at the Moore Foundation and these other places, she realized that it was important and it's meaningful and it was an inspiration to her. And she was able to inspire. I was, you know, watching the body language and, and watching the, uh, the people. Uh, and one-on-one um, -on -one can work. And it's a lot, there's, there's a lot of potential there. So, I have a question. Uh, first off, Mahalo uh, Nuno. Okay, uh, no, you know, so thank you very much for the power of our then. Uh, my question, or not really a question, it's more of a, just to bring relevance to the subject. I know a lot of, uh, you know, a lot of presentations are talking about the sacredness of the, of the council, right? But I know for a lot of us in the room, you know, when we hear sacredness, yeah, it's easy for us to think about, but, you know, for them, they don't really know, you know, what that truly means for the Kanaka. Right, so maybe it's uh, for you guys to touch on, you know, what it means for the mountain to be sacred to the Native Hawaiian people. Why it's you know it's called the birthplace of all, of Aloha, you know, um, to maybe give a better understanding to the people in the crowd, so that when they you know, when they go home tonight, they have a better viewpoint of why the Kanakamalu are out here arguing and wanting to. And I was watching all the main players in the Mauna Kea Bui. Now here's the end of a little story before the song. So the university is so arrogant, they got autonomy. Nobody's going to check whether or not they fill out their form. 
And to see, actually, it was the, the, the protectors of Mama Kia who came in to the hearings and said to the board, giving the license out, they said, well, you know, the university didn't do this, and they didn't do that, and they didn't fill out the form here, but this is what they were supposed to do over here. They actually did the homework. It's not that you wanted to get a grade, but somebody else is going to do your homework for you. So I go to the meeting, and I, I just stand up writing a song. Sometimes songs so what it means, what it meant for me. Come to sense, because otherwise we have no way. Of course. 
very, very ancient, the tallest cold volcano in the world, on the world, the largest shield volcano in the world, in the bottom of the ocean. And this was the song as I was carrying buckets of water in the south part of the big island of Yale. This little humming in the And I knew it was like a, a new something was going to come up. But the words started coming to put down the buckets and ran to the tent and said, give me a minute, I'm going to write down a song. And this was the song about water. Why would we want this water? Yeah, that's the, it's a very important <clears throat> thing, by the way, that just um, as, a, as, as a joke that those waters of Mauna Kea that are really amazing waters. They're very extremely purified and are used in indigenous medicine in ways, you know, they're, they're medicine all unto themselves. They're really, really amazing waters. They flow down um, to all kinds of amazing places, including deep under the ocean, like you will actually gather the water, the fresh water from Mauna Kea, down deep, deep, deep in the ocean, because there are rivers, there's under ocean rivers of this sacred water um, that flow from that mountain. So that's another reason why I have to talk to chemicals right at the top. summit is probably not a great idea, you know? So, um, it's like one of the aquifers coming from Mauna Kea. In the 70s, we got word on the big island that uh, I guess the nuclear energy people wanted to bring cesium-136 and cobalt-60 to the big island because they could keep it real cool. And then we could irradiate all the fruits coming out of there. The latest song in the legislature called Endangered Species and everybody got kind of scared and they didn't do that. I'm really glad.
are you going to wear? Mount the career today. Which mount? What tomorrow? Okay. And this is why so importance of the of the be inspired on it. It could be right in your in your own backyard. And it is for you. No. I'm really glad that it was rained, has rained a lot for the people here. And what's that? <laughs>
so shout out to her for uh, being on the show. And um, in regards to the few folks that you mentioned at the end, um, this has been um, a very, uh, it was very quick, the way this whole campaign was formed, and so we are still working on, on more drafting emails to certain people we should be reaching out to, uh, but I would definitely love to get um, those names again, if that's okay with you, um, to reach out to those folks, and, and uh, you know, like you said, it's important to ask them how we should approach this issue as well. Um, are there any other questions or comments? Yes. Um, I just want to remind you, did you say that like, as students in solidarity or as students who are you know, directly impacted, I, I want to make everyone feel like they can do something, right? Like, you know, like in this room, there's so many of us. What if we all organize ourselves? And what if we all join a campaign? What if we all contribute to like um, issues and matters that really are impacting our communities? Because a lot of times students can feel like, okay, like I signed a petition, I'm aware, but like, there's so much more power in, in actually like investing yourself in leaving the keyboard and like taking the issue of PMPP off, off the telescope because as you said, it is about peace, um, it is about like justice of like, you know, the, the occupying mass and like fighting for demilitarization of like all these islands and countries and like um, territories, right? Like, so I, I want to encourage everyone to just, um, you know, like, there's there's the space where you can take the next step to be more critical and um, like you know engage engage the, the opportunities that students here are bringing to us. Um, yeah. Yes, I will say that if you are interested in participating in, in this campaign, you can, like. Um, specifically here at UCLA, uh, you can um, hit up the Pacific Island Student Association, PISA. Um, we're going to be organizing a protest on the day of the Board of Regents meeting um, on March 13th. Um, and, and, and we want to ask, you know, even maybe for, for the, uh, to have a speaker, maybe to have someone uh, Kiroha or Poor Case actually address the Board of Regents and see them face to face. This, that would be great. Look, um, I also noticed that I, I was just looking because, to thank you for sharing with me about the Board of Regents meeting, which we did or well, we did not know about. Um, and so I looked on the website and saw that they're already taking written. So if anybody wants to look it up, you know, the University of California Board of Regents is, is pretty straightforward. You know, they have instructions for giving written and oral testimony, and they're already accepting written testimony. So um, I just found that out. So just, you know, as one more thing to put out there. Thank you. Um, so in regards to the UC Regents meeting, like I said, if folks are interested in uh, protesting with us, you can follow us on Instagram. UCLA underscore PISA um, and to see how you can get involved. Just shoot us a message and we'll get back to you. Um, in regards to the public comment, uh, we are also looking, um, we are also going to be signing up for the public comment. I think they allot 10 minutes and we have a couple students that want to give um, some testimonies um, at, that, uh, at that meeting. Um, other questions? The floor is still open. Or comments? Anything anybody wants to share? Uh, hello everyone, uh, my name is Dan Streamer. I'm an enrolled member of the Lost Coyotes Reservation and the Queer Um Just something that was very unsettling to me at the beginning that occurred. Um, so the basis of a land grant institution is the start of indigenous um, crimes. This land was not given to us by the Tongva people. It was taken from the Tongva people. The institution doesn't even acknowledge this. There's no acknowledgement of the Tongva people. And you and like this is the system that we are, you know, we're all students. We're complacent in the system. We'll, um, if we can't even do it here, <laughs> you know, how, how are we supposed to fight across the seas? Um, 
you know, it's really troubling, you know, because because just like the you know, this mountain's gonna be destroyed, is you know, you're gonna get a building right here. Look around us. If you guys can't see what happened here, <laughs> then you guys won't be able to see what's happened out is gonna happen in that mountain. Um, you know, as indigenous peoples, I'm just saying uh, we gotta do better to come together. Um, and I think this is a. I hope this opens your eyes to the the larger problem of indigenous rights. Um, this what we have here is also happening here on this university. We could use this to also protect our indigenous peoples here. As a indigenous person of California, I feel it's my right to speak up against these things, to speak up against these injustices. And um, I'm just saying this because, you know, I, I, my heart is sad, you know. My heart is sad, you know. Every day I go to school knowing that this land is stolen, knowing that we're complacent in the destruction of indigenous peoples. My heart is sad knowing that it's going across the seas to other communities. My heart is sad because this is the first instance that people even understand that indigenous people are being taken advantage of. And I just want to say that UCLA is a land grant institution. That means the federal, this is a federal land. The federal government gave land to this institution to create this institution. Federal land. American Indian reservations are also federal land. If you guys want to talk about indigenous, you know, indigenous justice, why was this land given for a public institution? Why wasn't this land given for a reservation base? You know, it's just the same way as they're, they're taking this telescope, you know, just desecrating the sacred mountain to put a telescope. Uh, I, bless, you know, I just had that in my heart, you know, it was unsettling. And I just want to speak up, like, the extent of the problem. It's here. It's, it's almost in every nation. And to be arrogant to it, you know, like this, this right now, this presentation, this shows the, that, you know, we're here. We're not all arrogant. We know what's going on. And um, I don't know if you guys aren't convinced in this room to stand up for this community. I just want to, you know, like, we all got to stick up, we all got to, we all got to watch each other's back, you know, like, um, we also got to be mindful of the fights that we all have, and, um, so I just, I'm sorry, you know, I, I for the Indigenous Day celebration in Alcatraz. From that time until now, we hit the ground running, running where ceremony to ceremony, group to group. If you, if, you know, just before I, we came on the trip, there was this really beautiful book, it said the, the Native Americans, uh, Native Americans, and, and they had a big picture, it was all glossy pictures, and. Right there you get an impression of well these are the guys who, you know, like they're in history books. They don't they don't exist. And you're given that impression right away from seeing the book. <coughs> when in actuality, when we hit the ground here, those families and those bands and the groups in that book have survived. And this is what I'm seeing. I see I went to Alcatraz. I'm affirming you because I'm, I'm, I'm very much into what you're saying because the groups would come and the Aztec dancers were coming and I was watching and they're very young, not too many elders left. Okay. So, and then we went up to, uh, to, uh, to towards Reading and there was another ceremony, a lot of young people and the Aztec dancers came there and they went to Sacramento 
and the identity, make, finding yourself, actually, you know, coming back with your language. I'm seeing that happen here. What, and I asked Talisa's mother when we were driving in the car, I said, well, what's missing? She said, well, we haven't really, the issue really hasn't come that's going to bring us all together to start to support each other. We come in ceremony. We come to down and bring, but to actually go there and plant or clean a river or build a roundhouse. That these are the kinds of, this, this would be like taking it to the heart. This uh, Thiru Laulani, who is affiliated with the seventh generation for indigenous peoples, I began to be connected. I'm so fortunate. We were informed a couple, couple weeks ago that this year, they're going to have their conference. Instead of the hotel and the casino in Arizona, they're going to have it in the Redwood Forest. And when I heard that, I went, oh, that's great. Maybe there's something we can do there. They actually work together, go in. And this is the type of things that can be done, that need to be done. And I'm, I'm, I'm so privileged to, you know, to be here. I'm inspired to, to be up here to, to help in any way I can. And, uh, and even if it's just observing from the outside what is happening when the outside can't quite see over the next mountain, but they're all starting to connect together. And this is, this is the valuable thank you. I mean, you bring up something dear to the hearts, I think. Everyone really got that message, yeah. So it's, it, you know, it's so important. The, obviously, things like this, they're so terrible, you know, so terrible that they would, that they would do something like this. That you would even think in this day and age of destroying a mountain so that they can see the stars. You know, it's just, it's, it's so, so awful. But the most beautiful thing about it has been being able to unite with people who unite with us. You know, when we went to UC Berkeley, we were there with the Lishan folks who are the people of that land at UC Berkeley. And for us to speak to our issue over the destruction of this mountain, the threat destruction of this mountain, we had to walk through the campus with them, led by the led by the Nishan, you know, who have their bones stored in the tower. You know, we we stopped there and had to, you know, we have to we had to do a whole ceremony just just for that, just so that we can get to the place where we can speak to our issue, you know? Because that's that's real, and it's not something that happened in the past. Those bones are there right now. They're there, and then they're under the women's swimming pool, you know, where they have them stashed in some underground repository. And it's not okay. It's really not okay. And the thing is that by coming together with us, we were able to bring a whole bunch of people together to be able to go to those places where those bones are in that tower and pray there, you know, and remember those ancestors that we're connected to too. Because our ancestors voyaged across the Pacific and were connected from way, way, way back. You know, so those are our, our kupuna too, you know, and the people from and this mountain is a mountain that the people, many of the people here are connected to, you know, and, and it goes on and on. It goes from every people of the entire earth. You can connect it back. And that's the beauty of being able to deal with the here and now of what is actually going on and it really is and it's not pretty 
But by, by dealing with that not pretty stuff, you have the most beautiful, beautiful things happen. To be here with you, with you both. I, in the 70s, my music got me in a lot of trouble. And I had to leave for a while. And I ended up living for seven years at the village of Leo Carrillo. And we said, well, how did you do it? Well, I said, because over there, I have my malach, I got my limo, I got my city. And it, it took care of me, the land here took care of me. And you never know, you know, it's not just about, I'm, for me personally, Hawaii, yes, the land of my mother, my mother's land. My father was an immigrant to this country, to this part of the world. They came from religious persecution from Spain. My heart is here too. And so if we help each other, who knows? Anything could happen along the ring of fire. You know, Yosemite is swelling. We're going into an accelerated ice age. Yes, it's warming up, but it's also going to get very cold. If there's one water hole, it's like watching the people move. Now look what's happening, you know, in, in, of course, in South America, Canada. Why? The people are moving. Why? Because you just can't survive there anymore. So we'll do, I'm sure, I know that we will do the best we can to preserve it because someday we may be all needing that water. You know, even when it was raining, all the rain, everybody said, yeah, the prison boards are filling up. Yeah, I'm saying, we should be catching water too. We should have catch water catch systems and things like that, you know. But, you know It's entitled Goldilocks and the Three Bears. Now, Buckminster Fuller, he had something to do with the geodesic dome. Okay. But he refers 
to the people of the oceans, Polynesia, as those atoll incubated omni advantaging societies. The people of the Pacific with different water, water, water is not like, you know, continents and peoples and rivers. We still have those divisions, but water and the, and the society, what do we bring? What has not happened in Hawaii since the 126 years of the military invasion and total destruction of culture? We never fought them. We never went to war against them. Our queen knew if we did that, we would not be standing here today. What do the peoples of the Pacific have to offer the world? And I believe it's what Buckminster Fuller mentioned. I'm a fisherman. I go down, I throw my net, I catch a big pile of fish. If I took that whole fish down there and cashed it in, what would the people in my, my village tell me? No. I'll get a, good, a couple of good fish and the rest is shared. And and, and I'm noticing, this is what I'm seeing today, okay? Along the coast here, the pe peoples, us, of the Pacific, are here. Why are we here? <coughs> Not just for education, but the way in which we have survived and the things that we have to offer. Again, omni advantaging and the, and the, the different things. So, so anyway, I think we're going to play one more song. Yeah. Yeah. So, again, to answer the question, what can we be inspired to from this? There's another song that was written in that same aquifer, in the Big Island. And, in this place, it's uh, right by the ocean, second largest aquifer. Sleep right on the right on the grass, the sand, the ocean, the reef, and the Milky Way. There are no uh, houses or lights that you can see in this really beautiful place. It's called Kawa in Kalu, in the district of Kalu. And this is another gift. So I'm, I'm, I'm really fortunate to, to have been from Miriam writing songs for you now.
um, Kuri Kekako, stand up and be comfortable where, wherever we are. Just like I'll often do recycling, I'll just pick up trash for everybody. Well, we don't have much time, so we have
I look forward to being with you folks again. Okay? We see, you know, thank you so much for the time and and what's mine was it's yours. Thank you. Thank you so much. so that it may guide us on our path, you know, for how we feel we should say Manokea. Um, thank you for coming to speak to us, for all the kahunas, the makuas, you know, our mothers and fathers that, you know, may be back in Hawaii that could not make it here to speak to us, to give us, you know, their insight. Um, like you said earlier, um, my kahuna tells me stories all the time about how, you know, she would have to, you know, scratch and claw to find anything out, you know, in their 60s and 50s about, you know, Hawaiian culture and Hawaiian language. Um, you, meant it, you know, speaking it was, you had to make sure the door was locked, the windows were closed, the sheets were over your head, and then, you know, you could whisper it. So, um, I just want to thank you guys for coming here. I know that we, as students, we have a big part in, in making sure that, you know, that this telescope doesn't get built, you know, and the fight, the, the fight the UC, the UC system and, and spending funds in order to build it. But I think uh, we don't want to undervalue the fact that you bring your Kuliana to us you know, it's also a big factor. I, mean, I want to thank you guys for being here for us to give us the guidance to be able to go and, you know, pave the way of stopping this telescope. You know, what? while while I was singing the song, this is what I envisioned. Okay? Was the years of Mauna Kea tradition from science, Hawaii needs help. In many places of the world need help. If it's not the telescope, what else can science, what else maybe can the California education system look at so that they can invest in Hawaii and help do some of the healing so that it's not like, oh, well, we're not going to do anything. No, let's, there are things we can do. From, you know, let's look in the mirror from the sky. We're looking for the source of the earth. We look at the sky and we can look right down, right in front of us while we're, we're standing. And this may be a direction for the students, for, for the future. The students. You folks are more than students. The metaphor for me is you are the tail of the great jacket. The great dragon that who without you, you know, imagine a great lizard, okay? And, and I'll tell you, I had this dream, and the reason why I did about five, six years ago, standing in front of a big field. Normally there would have been an uh, irrigation ditch coming through, a lot of water, people around, and taro growing. But there was nothing there, but I was still dreaming about it. It still looked good, even though there was nothing there. And these huge reptiles, crocodile, biggest, hugest lizard came in, well, came right in the front of me. And, I, and it was like speaking to me, and I noticed that its entire front half of its body was loose. It was going to shed, it wanted to mold its skin. But it was in fear because there was not enough water so that it could actually come off. And it was in fear that its top four legs would rip off of its body, and the weight of that would rip off the tail. So it allowed me to, to crouch down and allow me to put my hands underneath this huge skin. And you know how like sometimes you get a cut and get a scab, you start picking at it, it's kind of white underneath there. That's exactly how it was. And I was underneath this huge reptile trying to, you know, help it along. And all of a sudden, I saw these four feet by me. 
And they were talking, they were just saying, oh, bro, how you ain't catch this thing? How the did you catch this? And they were kind of like, they thought it was dead. The metaphor, they think that the culture is dead. No. And all of a sudden, they're walking around and, and do the harpoon, and they were actually getting mad. How oh, you don't catch this thing, bro? What? You went to come you Who come you with? What happened? And all of a sudden, the reptile went, and they just ran away. <laughs> But that metaphor, that dream, told me that six years ago, that we're getting close, Nico. We're getting close. But now, that was it's the most delicate time. Because that big, an animal that big without a tail, the likelihood of that animal surviving in the time that it's gonna need to grow its tail back, the likelihood of that, like the likelihood of our Earth and our well-being of our planet and all of our people and our resources, the likelihood of it surviving is not too great. So in the last five, six years, I have especially been with what I call the sum total of the four legs and the head and of the old skin, and that is invested in the tail. And you folks are the tail. And the larger the animal, the longer the tail. And now, in the metaphor of looking at, you know, this party, this, this one guy's want to go, the Republicans want to go this way, the Democrats want to, these guys don't want to do anything. And, and it's like this. The tail, the sum total, the tail, the manao, the, 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 the intuitive, DNA that is living in all of you is you need to survive. Now the skin is off. I mean pretty much the skin is off now. And it's the most vulnerable time. Our world, we are vulnerable. What what direction? You know, maybe the, the left lady still wants to go there. No uncle. And we know what happened when we went there. More better we go this way now. Yeah, but no, 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 we get no worry, relax. Be, be who you need to be. Because without you, you have, you folks are the guy. Once when I sailed the Hokulea before they went to Tahiti, okay? We don't know nothing about it. We don't know nothing about 60 foot double Hokulea. You know how much faster the 60 foot, two sail coming. And when, and when they came, when they, when, and I actually lived on the canoe for, for two months with his elder who was concerned with the purpose of the canoe and getting back to that noise. And what is the purpose? For her, the purpose of that canoe arriving is, is where is peace? What I have to do all of my own But as we came across the channel, I knew I was going to steer it. And all the Polynesian Voyage in Society, all the guys, you know, the star guys, the astronomy guys, they said, well, okay, we're going to attack this course and we're going to attack it. What are we going to do? And I said, no, we're not attacking. Everybody on the right side, oh, we're going straight across the channel. And went, I said, yeah, we're going straight across the channel. Everybody on the right hand side. And at that point, we turned around, saw how important astronomy and looking back is, too. From that point on, the only, I never once looked through the channel. All I did was turn back with the big sweep on the back of the Hokulea and watch this bird. When the bird went up on the wave, we dug in our sweep because we knew the wave was tall. And the entire hull of the Hokulea is out of the water, and we flew across the channel. So looking back, you know, and being sensitive, when the bird goes up, you dig in deep. So dig in deep. It's your folks. It's your folks world. It's gonna be your world. So uh, I look forward to coming back. You folks find yourself inspired in, in, in so many directions.
you know, and it's everywhere, sacred, sacredness is everywhere, the sacredness of, of everything. Right now, I'm trying to figure out this thing with the plastic. Every time we go to the store, we're just going to be covered with plastic. This is a secret thing, you know, I mean, how, what, you know? You know? <laughs> I mean, even when you don't want it, you're going to get it. And so this is the kind of stuff, you know, aloha, aloha aina. Uh, I'm sure that word, that whole concept has lived in all of our indigenous roots. The indigenous culture is now standing up. Everybody has an indigenous root. And if we can inspire the indigenous movement, inspire other people who, to find the indigenous, yes, we'll go. We'll rise together. So, good luck to us. Okay? And let's have fun. Work together, lokai, you know, help each other, kukua each other, and, uh, you know, What's mine is yours, but yours is also Makunam too. Okay. Small words is so small together right now. So thank you, Mama, for she's a driver going on the road. I'll be lost. I'll be lost. I'll be lost. But thank you for 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 you know without her I wouldn't have a canoe to ride in. Thank you. Yeah. Okay, so, uh, wraps us up with the great message that we as students are the tail of this movement. You know, we're the ones who are going to dictate how UC is going to um, either invest or divest from the 30 meter telescope. Um, I'm going to offer uh, Alani if she has any last remarks uh, to wrap up uh, our town hall. Um, but thank you all uh, who have um, stayed until the end of our town hall. If any of you are interested in signing our petition, we have an online one that you can come up to me and ask for, or we have um, hard copy um, signatures um, that we're also taking. Um, if there's food outside when you all are leaving, you are more than welcome to take um, what you want. And um, I just want to thank again our elders for being here for um, being with us and talking to us about this uh, about this about this uh, movement that we're trying to hold the UC accountable for you know their claims to be such a diverse uh, institution. Yes. Okay, uh, thank you for bringing up that suggestion. I think that's a, an awesome idea and um, we should definitely talk more um, beyond the town hall. Um, any other last comments or remarks before I give Lala and the last? Or do you want to give any? Um, I, I just wanted to add one one thought that um, you know, in addition to the awesome things that you folks are doing by uh, being here, and I cannot tell you. Geez. You know, I can't tell you how much it meant to me to see you guys. You know, when we were when we came up, we were just kind of going to go and go to the astronomy department and see if we could talk to some people. You know, and um, we don't know where we're going. We're just walking through the UCLA, and then we see these brothers over there. You know, giving um, getting people to sign petition for Mauna Kea and talking to people and. That means so much to us. It's not just the petitions that can move the the regents or the you know the administration, but it's also that inspiration feeds these movements. I mean, really, they 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 
run on inspiration. If there, if there is no inspiration, it's very hard for them to run. And, you know, it's those kinds of moments, you know, because I kind of went live, you know, and I'm, I'm, I'm showing what these guys are doing. And people in Hawaii are tripping out. They're, they're like, oh my gosh, there's people in California standing up for us. You know, and I don't know how uh, any folks realize how much it means when you're on an island and you're surrounded by oppression and you're surrounded by a lot of bad press, like really bad press that twists the facts, makes, you know, puts, deliberately pits your own people against you, you know, family employment, all kinds of stuff, you know, and it's it, it's a very hard battle. I mean, standing in front of the bulldozers is probably like, I'm not going to say it's the easy part, but it's, you know, it's, it's probably the preferable part that people would rather do than all of the other, like, you know, grunge that goes into it. And to get through all of that, you know, and keep standing, and keep standing, and keep standing, because that's what you gotta do to win, right? You gotta keep standing. It's not just a matter of standing one time at one moment. You have to be there every single time. You know, and to do that, you need the inspiration. That's what you folks are doing for the people over there. When they see you standing up here, it means something. It means, wow, we're part of a bigger ohana. We have Ohana, you know, they may come from the Pacific, they may come from the native peoples of California, they may come from Switzerland or wh wherever, you know, but they're standing with us. They're, these are like family that we don't even know. You know, that's how people feel when they see folks doing those kinds of things. So I just want to really thank you for, for doing it. It means so much to the people at home. It really, really does. You know, and I mean, Nancy Poolcase was saying she was having a really hard day today, a really, really rough day. And then she saw, you know, she saw you guys doing what you're doing out there, you know, and it's just like, wow. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, so I want to thank you. Uh, one more thing, too. Connecting with other students. That's a really important thing. On other campuses. On other campuses. Because here's the thing. Is, um, it just so happens that that day, the 13th, that we're talking about, the Board of Regents is meeting here. It just so happens, and I think it's coincidence, that um, the University of Hawaii is planning a major rally that day and for Mauna Kea, right? So the students there are rallying for Mauna Kea. And then, um, so that's happening there. And then because of this happening, then the Berkeley students started getting into it. And now they're starting to rally on that same day. Right, um, and I believe there's interest from Santa Cruz as well, and there may be interest from Caltech. You know, these are all the places where the schools are funding this telescope. You know, which is just the most amazing thing, and that's you know that's what you folks are. So when when you folks connect to each other, oh my goodness. You know, then the the whole sh playing field shifts. So I'm just gonna put it out there. That, that, that's something that you might want to do. Um, if you go and you look at my on my Facebook pictures, I've been taking pictures all over at the, of these different gatherings. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. And can I ask us to actually take a group picture before before we leave? Is that okay? <laughs> okay, mahalo. Yeah, because I'm
if you can. Um, because, you know, it, it, students connecting to other students is where you're going to start building the power, not just for Mauna Kea, but for the big huli, the big overturning of all the things that you, you're going to need to overturn. And it's we're coming to that time where no, not one, one person ain't going to do it. You know, it's going to be how you connect to everybody else that you're going to be able to just flip that thing over, you know, whatever you, whatever it is that you need to flip. So um, I hope that this moment, this Mauna Kea moment, we call them Mauna Miracles. I hope that this Mauna Miracle will be a miracle that will help all of your peoples, all of, you know, all of the, the things that you strive to achieve. Mahalo. Thank <laughs> you.